welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying this video and our channel, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button down below, because we're always releasing new videos and new content for engineering students. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. This video today is going to be on Rankin Lateral Earth Pressure, Rankin's Lateral Earth Pressure. And what Rankin's Lateral Earth Pressure is, essentially is, you know, uh, either the wall is exerting pressure on the soil or the soil is exerting pressure on the wall. And um, we're going to measure kind of the, the, the pressure that is on the wall as a result of that. And um, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Um, we're given a soil sample here. We have this backfill. This is the soil surface, and we have this retaining wall here of 5 meters. We have normally consolidated sand. That's important, and we'll get to why that's important in a second. We have uh, soil density, the unit weight. We have uh, the angle of friction, and we have the cohesion of the soil. So a few important things to note here are the cohesion is zero, and we're also given normally consolidated sand. That's important. And um, let's just read the question first, and then we'll go over what we need to do. So we have a 5 meter retaining wall, so we're asked to determine Rankine's active force per unit length and Rankine's passive force per unit length of the wall and the location of the resultants. Cool, so what is Rankine's lateral earth pressure? What's active pressure and what's passive pressure? So for active pressure, what this means essentially, okay, so let's say we have our retaining wall here, okay, and we have all of our soil acting on here, okay. And what we're going to have, and of course it could be at rest, Okay, the wall can be at rest, but we're going to look at active and passive for this video. So we have our active pressure, and what's, what's happening essentially is that the soil is exerting some pressure, and this is a little bit exaggerated, but this blue line is the shape of the, the wall, and the, the soil is exerting some pressure on the wall. We'll call this delta here. Okay, and what's going to happen is originally the soil was kind of in this area here, right? And now it's expanded as well over here. So there's more area for the soil to be in, that which means there's going to be less pressure on the soil. Okay, so that's what we call active earth pressure. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what passive earth pressure is. So passive earth pressure, okay, is when the wall is allowed to kind of, and we have our soil here, yes, or is when this the wall is in fact exerting a pressure on the soil itself, and it's causing uh, the, the the internal pressure within the soil to increase. So if we take kind of like an element out here, we take an element and we just move it out here, and we analyze this element, okay, we're going to have some sigma prime naught, okay, that's, we'll call that our, our vertical stress on the soil, and this force here, our horizontal, we're going to call that uh, sigma prime h, and sigma prime h is simply the vertical pressure times some constant, some coefficient. And it's called actually Rankine's uh, earth pressure coefficient. And for active, we're going to call that Ka. And it's the same thing actually for the passive. For the passive, we're just going to call it, and we just take our element out here, our stress element, we're going to call that sigma prime naught times Kp for passive. And Kp and Ka have values, and we're going to go over what those are. So that's what Rankine's earth pressure is, in a nutshell. Um, there is a lot more to it, actually. Um, but And as you can see here, um, Ka okay, is simply going to be, you know, these are equal to each other, so we divide both by uh, sigma prime naught. So we have Ka is sigma prime h over sigma prime naught. Okay, so the effective horizontal stress over the effective uh, vertical stress on, on a given element in the soil. Cool. So um, let's take a look at what the formulas are, first of all, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to solve the problem. So we're going to start with the active, okay? Let's take a look at the active first. And um, when we have our active, if you'll remember, okay, we had this, our wall was kind of bending this way, okay? And we have our soil here, okay? And as a result, this is going to cause a pressure distribution, okay? And this pressure distribution is going to look, in the active sense, a little bit something like this. Okay, is we're going to have a pressure distribution, something like this. This pressure up here, okay, and as we as we discussed before, this uh, this this relief up here of the pressure is going to cause the pressure diagram to decrease. So it's going to move actually to the negative side here. So we have two times C prime, which is our cohesion value, times root K A. Okay, and this is all going this direction. And on the bottom here, uh, our pressure value is simply K A 
gamma h minus 2 c prime root k a. So this is this value here. Okay. So, and I'm going to get into what these values are. I'm just going to explain the general concept of the formula first. The earth pressure per unit length of the wall is essentially, it's the, it's the area of these two triangles, okay? And I'm just going to write that out for you. So we're going to have one half, okay, times Ka times gamma times h squared minus two root Ka c prime h, okay? Where this entire distance here is h, okay? And uh, for the passive, a similar uh, issue, okay? We have our soil here. Now the wall is bending in this direction. So our pressure diagram is going to go in the other direction. Now this, this, uh, this the soil on the top is actually going to be under um, an increased stress here, okay? And then as we go deeper, we're going to have a linear increase of stress, okay? Due to the height, okay? We're going to have, and these are all exerting some pressure on the wall here. Okay, everything on this side is on the right, and we have uh, this distance here is 2 C prime root Kp, and this distance here is simply Kp gamma H, Kp gamma H. And the area of this rectangle and this triangle, we're going to get the passive uh, pressure per unit length of the wall, is just simply the area of these, 1 half Kp gamma H squared, plus this time, because as I said, the pressure is increasing, we have two root Kp C prime H, where this is H here. Okay, cool. So now we have these two formulas, all right? And uh, what do these things mean? Well, Ka here, okay, Ka is simply, uh, we, you know, we went over Ka before, and Ka is the, you know, the ranking earth uh, pressure coefficient. And we can get Ka actually, um, uh, as I said before, it was the horizontal stress over the vertical stress. I'm not actually going to get into the derivations, but we have Ka is simply 1 minus sine 30 uh, sine uh, phi prime divided by 1 plus sine phi prime. And uh, actually, Kp is just simply the, um, if you flip the fraction. And now what else do we have? We have H, gamma, we know what all these things are, but what about this side? So C here is another uh, interesting value. So C if we take a look at the shear stress uh, versus the effective normal stress plot, this is C prime, and uh, C prime here is the distance from uh, the what's what this line here, which is what we call the Moore's uh, Moore Coulomb failure criteria, to the origin. Now, this uh, these expressions are given by this value, and as you can see, this soil here, which is a non-cohesive soil. Okay, doesn't have any C prime value, okay? And uh, if you're not sure how these are plotted, um, we can do another video on that. That's a different topic. So uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that for the non-cohesive soil, there is no value of C prime. So C prime becomes zero, okay? And actually tan um, phi prime is simply mu. That's uh, something interesting to know as well. Sorry, this is uh, sigma, my mistake. Sigma prime, not phi prime. So what does that mean? Since C prime here is zero, and we actually were given that it's a normally consolidated sand, so it's, it depends on the friction between the particles, no, not cohesiveness between them, because the particles in the sand are larger, this means that uh, actually we can remove this entire term from each formula, okay? So this is zero, and this term is zero, and we're left with just these two terms here. Head, and we can start to take a look and just start to plug in. Okay, so Ka here, is simply one minus sine um, phi prime over one plus sine phi prime. And we're gonna get that this is simply 0 0.33, okay? Perfect, so uh, what else are we looking for here? We need a gamma here, so what's our gamma? That's given, it's 14, and our H here is five. And now we can plug in. So we have PA is simply one half, okay? Times 0 0.33 times 14 times five squared. So we're gonna get that the force per unit length of the wall for the uh, active force, okay, is simply gonna be 57.75 kilonewton per meter, okay? And where is the resultant? Well, this is gonna kind of look like this, okay? So we're going to have some pressure distribution like this here, okay? And what is PA? Well, PA is simply this value here, okay? So we have 57.75 kilonewton per meter, okay? 
And where is this acting? Well, this is just a triangle, right? As we said before, the C value is zero. So uh, this is just simply a triangle. It's a linearly increasing uh, value because, um, you know, that's what the earth pressure, how it acts. So this is just simply at h over 3. And h over 3 is 5 divided by 3. That's going to be 1.67. Okay, so we'll say that our z bar is 1.67 meters. Now let's go ahead and let's solve for b, and then we're done. So b, uh, the passive pressure, um, the the solving part of these problems is actually really easy. Um, the, I, I tried to spend a little more time on the understanding because, you know, it can get a little bit tricky. So uh, our passive pressure from the last video, we showed that it was the uh, 1 half times the Rankine's passive pressure coefficient times gamma times h squared. And I'll, I'll just write it out. Um, but we have kp c uh, prime our cohesion times h. So this whole term becomes zero because c is zero. And we're left with this, okay, we're going to have one half kp. What's kp? Well, kp was, is simply the reverse of this uh, rational number here. So we have one time, one plus sine uh, phi prime. So the effective friction angle over one minus sine phi prime. And that's going to give us one plus sine, uh, and we just go ahead and plug in 30 here. You're going to get that kp is three. And go ahead and just plug in. So we have three, okay, 14. 5 squared. You'll get that PP is simply 525 kilonewton meter. And once again, we have a linear stress distribution here. And we have, this is 525 kilonewton per meter. Very good. And we're going to have that it also acts at the same distance. Z bar, Z bar is 1.67 meters. So that's it. Um, as you can see, P, uh, the the passive pressure is much higher than the active pressure. And that's because the wall is allowed to kind of lean into the soil and it's actually causing the soil to increase by quite a bit. So that's uh, very interesting to note there. And I hope uh, this, you know, wasn't too complicated. I did have a little bit of trouble kind of trying to lay out this video, but I hope you, you, you know, you learned something from it. Let me know down in the comment, uh, comments down below if you want to see any more soil stuff um, like this, uh, any more clarification, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.